Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about Beam Therapeutics and their latest announcement regarding their new cell therapy for T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia by using base edited chimeric antigen receptor T-cells, whereby they were able to simultaneously edit four different genes within the T-cells. And the name of this therapy is Beam 201. So as we'll see in this video, the company have some pretty promising preclinical data for BEAM201 and so are deciding to advance BEAM201 as a development candidate for the treatment of T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So in this video, firstly I'll just introduce you to BEAM Therapeutics and then we'll talk about this latest announcement telling you how they've been able to do this and achieve 96 to 99% on target editing by using base editing to simultaneously edit four genes. And then we'll look at why in particular they needed to edit so many different genes. And then lastly, we'll just look at where they're at and kind of summarize everything together. So firstly then, what is Beam Therapeutics? Well, Beam Therapeutics is a biotechnology company developing precision genetic medicines through the use of base editing. So I'll mention shortly what base editing actually is. But the company itself was founded in 2017 by David Liu and Feng Zhang, amongst others, and they're currently trying to use base editing approaches to be able to treat a variety of different diseases, such as different cancers, as we'll see in this video, but also potentially for liver diseases and for sickle cell diseases as well. So next then, what actually is base editing? Well, pretty much is what it says, it edits bases. So to be a bit more clear, the human genome has four types of bases that can be found in DNA, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Adenine pairs with thymine and cytosine pairs with guanine. So A with T and C with G. And the sequences of these bases are really important for expression of different genes within the cell and mutations in different genes that alter the sequence can result in disease. So bottom line, the sequence of bases is really important for correct gene expression. So currently there are two main base editors. There are cytosine base editors, whereby the base can be changed from cytosine to thymine. And there are adenine base editors, whereby the bases can be changed from adenine to guanine. So I'm going to tell you about cytosine base editors because it's the one that's used in Beam 201. So although base editing doesn't really sound like CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing, it still very much depends on the CRISPR-Cas9 components to be able to target specific DNA sites of interest. So a cytosine base editor firstly consists of Cas9, that is an RNA-guided DNA nuclease, and a nuclease referring to something that can cut DNA. And so the major difference between base editing and CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing is that Cas9 in its normal functioning state induces a double-stranded break into DNA. However, base editing works by only inducing a single-stranded break into the site where you want an edit to occur. So the Cas9 is there to help target the cytosine base editor, but how do you actually go from cytosine to thymine? Well, the Cas9 is fused to a cytidine deaminase, and what this does is it removes an amine group from cytosine, and so what this actually does is convert cytosine into uracil, which in an RNA form is actually read as thymine. So currently we've gone from a guanine cytosine pairing to a guanine uracil pairing. But as I said earlier, C pairs with G and A pairs with T, or U in this case. So how do we now go from U to G to U to A? Well, this is the challenging part because uracil isn't supposed to be in DNA. And so there's an enzyme within the cell known as uracil DNA glycosylase that will get rid of that uracil and convert it back into cytosine, restoring the original base pairing. So to circumvent this, the cytosine base editor is also fused to monomers of uracil glycosylase inhibitor. And so this helps to inhibit the activity of uracil glycosylase. And so it prevents the uracil from being removed. And so the way that you can then go from a uracil to guanine base pair to a uracil to adenine base pair occurs during DNA replication, where you generate a new DNA sequence. And whilst in theory this editing would be a 50-50 chance as to whether the uracil or the guanine would, would remain, 
This ratio can be biased by nicking the strand that contains the guanine such that the strand that contains the uracil is kept instead and you end up going from C to G to U or now thymine to adenine. And so this is the reason why the Cas9 only nicks one strand instead of having a Cas9 that doesn't actually nick either of the strands. So irrespective of whether or not you followed any of what I just said, and apologies if you didn't, I hope you can at least understand how challenging base editing is and then how remarkable it is that these preliminary results from beam therapeutics seem to show simultaneous edits of four different DNA locations at the same time. So what is BEAM201 then? What were they trying to do with it? Well, BEAM201 is a developmental candidate that is generated using base editing to be able to treat T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And so this is a cancer of T-cells that can be found in your blood. And one way this cancer can be treated is through the use of CAR T therapy. And this is a type of therapy whereby they can reprogram T cells to attack the cancerous T cells. So some T on T cell crime. <laughs> so the premise behind CAR T cell therapy is that you can take T cells from the patient and reprogram them in a manner such that they express this chimeric antigen receptor which is where the CAR of CAR-T therapy comes from. And this receptor has been designed such that it can recognise targets on the cancerous T-cells and kill them. And so one reason why they take T-cells from the patient is that when they put the reprogrammed T-cells back into the patient, there isn't an, an immune response to the foreign cells because the cells originally came from the patient. However, CAR T cell therapy is quite expensive and it takes time to, you know, extract the T cells and to do the reprogramming. And so what beam therapeutics were trying to do was to develop some CAR T cells that could be universally compatible. And so to do that, they needed to take some T cells from a healthy donor and not only insert the CAR T cell receptor, that is the premise behind the CAR T cell therapy, but also to edit the T cells such that they could be compatible and also to improve the efficacy of these modified T cells in killing the cancerous T cells of the patients. So the part that doesn't require base editing is the addition of this chimeric antigen receptor and the receptor that they designed targets the antigen CD7 that's found on the cancerous T cells. And this can be added to the cells through uh, electro viral transduction. And so given that these T cells are going to be targeting cancerous T cells that express CD7, it'd be pretty good for the modified T cells to also to not be expressing CD7. Otherwise, you could end up with the modified T cells attacking each other. And what happens then is that this these nice, nice modified T cells get depleted over time by their own actions. A base editing can be used to silence the expression of CD7 in the modified T-cells. In addition, there were three other genes that they wanted to silence. This includes the gene that encodes endogenous T-cell receptor, which enables the beam 2 a one cells to prevent host rejection. Another gene was CD52, which they wanted to silence to help prevent rejection of the beam 2 a one cells, when the patients are lymphodepleted as they receive cells from a healthy donor. And the last gene to be silenced is PD-1. And the rationale behind this is that a lot of the cancerous T cells in the patients express PD-L1's ligand, PD-L1. And this PD-L1, PD-1 interaction uh, suppresses the activity of T cells. And so by depleting PD-1, they can prevent the potential inhibition of the T cells that they're trying to add to the patients. And so to summarise, the aim of the different edits are to make BEAM201 cells that are unable to cause graft versus host disease, where the body recognises the cells as foreign, resistance to fracticide, which is what I was talking about with the T cells, the modified T cells attacking each other, and also resistant to immunosuppression, and to basically to prevent host rejection and to make the cells universal. And so as you can see in this figure here, the preclinical data that's come from beam therapeutics shows that they have simultaneous base editing of these four different gene loci by using the cytosine base editor 
in primary human T cells. And the efficiency they were getting is around 96 to 99% on target editing, which is pretty impressive. And the T cells seem pretty amenable to the base editing process since their growth remains pretty similar to how it was before the editing. And also during the editing, there was minimal impact on the P53 pathway, which as we all know, P53 is my favorite protein and is a stress activated protein. And so this is a good sign that the base editing process wasn't stressful or inducing any particular damage within the cells. And then lastly, in this preclinical work, they've also characterized the efficacy of BEAM201 in the tumor mouse model. And so quite remarkably, as you can see in this figure here, it shows a potent in vivo tumor clearance of the tumor in these mice. And it's also kind of a dose dependent manner, whereby you see the more cells that are given to the mice, the greater the clearance compared to the control. So all of this is very promising preclinical data. And so, as I mentioned somewhere near the beginning, the company are now going to progress BEAM201 towards clinical development. And to their knowledge, and to my knowledge as well, this will be the first cell therapy that has four simultaneous genetic edits, which basically demonstrates the power of multiplex based editing technology. And so for me, I think that's pretty, pretty cool. And so, yeah, it'll be exciting to see how this uh, therapy progresses and I'll be sure to try and keep a track on it. So hopefully you've learned something in this video where we've gone all about that base. And as always, thanks for listening.